Yeah, I'm looking at a pop-up ad on something, and it says, Hey, om homeowners, do this, and your bank will freak. <laughs> I'm like, it's probably not a financial trick. It's probably just, like, go into your bank while, you know, wearing... If you're a man and you're wearing, you go in wearing women's clothes and waving a gun around, yeah, they'll probably freak. That seems uh, reasonable. But I guess do this and your bank will freak is the new, um, here's one weird trick for gaining muscle. Or my favorite, librarians hate this new website. <laughs> it's like, I think it's a website about how you can get access to books online. But like, why would librarians hate that? They want people to read. I am off track. I'm Serious JG. I want to welcome you guys back to Let's Play Fallout New Vegas. Um, we're doing the Ahana's Tarts DLC. And my off-topic intro sure would be off-putting to anybody who joins my LP for the first time here in video 200-something. Whatever number this actually is. We're going to the Angel Cave to uh, talk to Joshua. Joshua is uh, the light side uh, the light force of this island. There's also a dark force that takes the form of a smoke monster. And, uh, no, actually, thankfully, that's not what's happening, because I'll be really lame. And there's nothing at all lame about this Indian tribe Oi. in the future. Auslander Zuka, Joshua Graham. Am I looking for Joshua? Yes, I am. Can you tell me where he is? Yeah, I should have, like, a speech, um... I guess speaking doesn't help as much as intelligence in this situation. You know our tongue. Smart, Auslander. Well, your tongue is basically English. Joshua with a minor in the high place of cave. You show respect, Utman. Joshua is greatest warrior. You show him no respect. He show you thunder and fire. I don't know. I got a hundred sneak and a hundred gun. I'll make sure to be on my best behavior then. Um, okay, thanks for that. I sure would hate to be shown thunder and fire. You wise for Auslander. And you have nothing more to say, right? You are now a normal, anonymous person. Oot. 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 In the boot. Uh, party time, Mentats. I come to bring your people party time, Mentats. He's drinking a bottle of water. Yeah, that. They sure do like their campfires. You... Keep coming with me. Uh, cave fungus. I think that this fungus is among us. Civilized lands outside Zion. Is there really a giant fungus? This is the problem with all companions in this game. The DLC ones it seems particularly noticeable. They they're given a few little cute turns of phrases which get really old really fast. I think that's why I liked uh, Christina so much. I mean, it sounds like totally sexist that I'm saying, oh, I love this female character who can't talk. It's like, no, I just love the fact that she was like, you know, she would shut the fuck up. Not that, like, women shouldn't talk. It was more like everyone shouldn't talk constantly. So cave fungus I'm not seeing in anything. Mutant cave fungus, a big deal. Oh, well, here's something with the cave fungus in it as soon as I say it. Poison resistance? Nice. This is cactus water. Oh, empty soda bottle. Well, there were empty soda bottles out there. Salient green. I think salient green is something that's going to be associated with a different DLC. I'm just guessing, though. Uh, I have managed not to have any of that DLC spelled for myself. And if I had a lick of sense, I would try to keep it that way. Especially since... Oh, man. Way back when, there was some guy who was so... Like, dripping with venom. So pissed off. Uh, in the Like, a comment in the first video. Just, like, every... Like, he, he hated me. It sounds like he wanted, like, reach through his screen and murder me. Because I was calling this a blind LP even though I had looked at a fac about, uh, about the skills and stats, the, the special, you know, the special stats and skills and trying to, like, figure out how to build a decent character, because I figured I'd only play the game once, and I didn't want to be horrible. Oh, man, he's pissed. So this isn't blind, you're a fucking liar. And you're playing on Xbox 360 like some kind of chump. Never actually found out what 
what way I was supposed to be playing the game. I'm only reminded of that some, like recently within the last two weeks. Uh, you know, you get notified of your comments on your videos, and somebody just like randomly came out to like take my side and defend me against this guy, and I was like, <laughs> I didn't say anything, but in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, you know, it's cool, dude. It was like four years ago that this guy just like went to fuck off on me. I'm uh, I'm okay with it now. <laughs> Actually, if you hadn't if you hadn't like made a comment to try to defend me from his wrath, uh, that's the only reason I can remember that that guy did that. We should have given you a better welcome on your first visit to Zion. Yeah. But from what I hear, the White Lakes beat us to it. You heard right, uh, White mummy. Lakes seem to be the only visitors we have these days. And I wouldn't have expected anyone from the Mojave to come looking for us. And you're a courier, no less. Can I talk? Not the one I was expecting. But I suppose he wouldn't have come with a caravan. I don't know if you were close to the other members of your group. But you have my sympathy. I pray for you the safety ask of all me. good people who come to Zion, even Gentiles. Oh, wow. But we can't expect God to do all the work. Even Gentiles? You know, Joshua Graham, um, you could have asked me if I was close to the other couriers. I'm not, but... How do you know so much about what happened to me? I came here with a Happy Trails caravan company to make contact with the new Canaanites. How do I get out of here? I'm trying to think. I, I spend too much time worrying about him. I, I, both of the first two options seem pretty reasonable to me. He probably already knows why I'm here, but this is, seems like the polite way to introduce yourself. Happy trails. I remember. They were good friends. I have bad news for your employers. New Canaan was destroyed, its citizens scattered. All because of the White Legs. And Caesar, of course. I thought it was Kaiser. The White Legs want to join the Legion. Caesar's rite of passage is the destruction of the New Canaanites. Almost assuredly because of me. Mm. The good news is that we can help you find your way back. Daniel, one of the other New Canaanites, has made many maps of the region. The Sounds bad pretty neat. news is that we can't help you right now. Not with everything that's going on. Well, could I make my own copy of a map? I'm not going to leave without offering to help. What can I do? Don't try to get me to help you. I'm not interested. What about I go find your Daniel and shake the information out of him? I think we could be... We're a we're, uh, Smurf dialogue playthrough here. You're a good neighbor to us. We all go through periods of darkness. In such times, we can turn to the Lord. But it's good to have friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two trails Daniel walking through the sand, then there was only one. To help us navigate beyond Zion. Should we need to evacuate, these instruments will be vital to us. Normally, we would have some of the dead horses or sorrows look for them. But many pre-war buildings in the valley are taboo. They won't go inside. Well, they're probably irradiated. Taboo? The sorrows believe in a spirit that lives in the caves. Say the spirit punished them once for trespassing. Is it true? They put special marks around the cave entrances to keep people out. It doesn't work on the white legs, of course. But the dead horses are spooked. Let's see what I can do. Uh, I know who he is based on some reading I did before purchasing any of the DLCs, but are we meant to know who he is? That's one of my biggest confusions when trying to do commentary in this game. I find out something, and I don't remember whether the game told us. I guess I should go back and look at my own video. They talked about um, the Burning Man, didn't they? The Burned Man? Thank you. Follow Shock can help you find your way around the valley. He's inexperienced, but he knows enough of our language to ignore the taboos about pre-war buildings. We got a lot of experience for this, I guess. Yeah, and it's that perk. It, it it feels like you know, it feels like a wasted perk. If I wasn't kind of trying to get through this game with some speed so that I'll be ready for Fallout 4 when it comes out, I would certainly. I'm I'm aware there's enough experience in the game without using a perk to give you plus 20% whatever. But um. 
Joshua. Yeah, the, the big quest ones. That's when it feels pretty good. Because that was probably only 500 experience, and I got 700. There's another perk to give you plus 10%, and looking back, I should have taken that perk a long time ago. Now that I've actually, like... Now that I'm actually using that experience boosting perk, because uh, in my you know Fallout 3 playing, uh, which was not for LP purposes, I never took perks like that. I um I should have taken it. It should have been the very first perk I took. Shut up. I got bottle caps. Go jingle jangle jingle. All right, you take them. You take them from this side. I'll take them this side. We'll double team uh, this guy. Take him out. Welcome back. What can I do for you? And now I know. What exactly? What did you say about a courier? Who were you expecting? Caesar would never admit this openly, but he knows that I'm alive. I've killed enough of his frumentari and assassins that have come looking. I've heard one of them travels the Mojave as a courier. Most of Caesar's agents meet a fitting end in NCR territory. But maybe this one survived. Oh. Pray God, what are you talking about? Uh, it seems stupid to me, but I do want to hear the the dialogue that comes out of it. I am a new Canaanite. We the Canaanites, and you know that we're we'll back. Everybody tradition. else in the house know that they whack. Got a quad laser. It'll amaze you. My kids, that is that. that so won't you respect that? Check it out. Go check it. Check it out. Jay, Sorry. Bye. We have promised eternal Should be salvation listening. after this life. A day will come when our Lord returns to judge us all. Until then, we must honor his laws and start others along the path of salvation if we can. That's why we trade with others and work the tribes. We have more than food and medicine to offer. Good news is our most valuable commodity. Good news, everyone! Yeah, but do you actually believe that, like, um, the Garden of Eden was in Branson, Missouri, or whatever? I mean... I saw a Book of Mormon, and, uh, I, I don't know, man. I mean, you guys, uh, hey, you know, you, you believe what you want to believe, but I'm like, is it true that you believe you get your own planet when you die, but only if you're a guy, or is that just something people are saying about you to make you say, I, I don't know, I, I, I'm wondering. Sounds like a good deal, huh, if you say it to her, you don't actually believe that, do you? Huh, you know... I guess the Paragon Path is like... Now I'm thinking back, how would Shepard answer this? And he'd probably say, Yep, you're allowed to believe whatever crazy fucking shit you want. Like, I tried to take a like neutral response and to Ashley's religion in Mass Effect 1, and Shepard's like, You can believe whatever you want. It says so in the Galactic Constitution. <laughs> but it came off as totally douchey. Sounds like a good deal, huh? If you say so. Haha, <laughs> wait, you don't actually believe that, do you? Huh, if you say so. I mean, that's a little a little more uh, looking down on you than I would like, but, I mean, I'm, I'm too cowardly to be an atheist, but I'm pretty much an agnostic. So uh, that's kind of my, my, you know, when other people are religious, they got the right to believe what they want. But my, my take is kind of like, well, you know, if you say so, it's whatever you want to think, man. It's up to you. It's your call. I'm not going to tell you what to think. Sounds like a good deal. Sounds like... Oh, let's go with this one. Whether there is a God or not, his existence doesn't depend on what you believe or what I say. True. There is much to be skeptical of in this world, so it no longer surprises me to learn how many people don't really believe in anything. But I believe that our Lord was made flesh as Jesus Christ and died to redeem me and you and the sorrows, even the white legs, everyone. Seems, um, I mean, you know, it's a fictional universe, but I uh, sort of have to admire the fact that he uh, he's keeping the faith um, in his situation. It's a pretty fucked up situation. He's keeping the faith. I, I guess I don't know what else he would do if he were in his shoes. Nice guns. Hope no Paul drivers tonight. In the Great Basin and Colorado Plateau, all tribes are known for a specific weapon. White legs are known for their big submachine guns, storm drums. They broke into an armory near Spanish Fork 
and have been using them for years. Where are they getting the ammo? Of course, the dead horses have their wooden war clubs, and even the sorrows have their Yao Guai gauntlets. This type of 45 sad. automatic pistol was designed so by sad. one of my tribe almost 400 A host years of ago. Sorrow. Learning its use is a new Canaanite rite of passage. I guess we're meant to know who he is, because there's no dialogue options where I ask him, who are you, and why are you all bandaged up? You on the show around here? I wouldn't say that. I am the acting war chief for the Dead Horses. I should be war chief! For such matters, but I only have the authority they give me. They are forced to respect my authority. Leader, the main link of the new Canaanites to the Sorrows. He's up in the Narrows right now. What's going on with all these tribes, Holmes? A great deal. There are three, make that four, tribes here in Zion. You've already met the White Legs on the way in. In this camp, you'll find dead horses. Hmm. In the narrows, the You stars. should carry them outside, maybe and bury them. there's Daniel and myself. We're new Canaanites. We're the hottest new tag team in WWE, the new Canaanites. We're like the new rockers. Why do the White Legs attack my caravan? They attack everyone who isn't a white leg, especially caravans. They don't know how to survive on their own, so they have to raid. Somebody should teach those motherfuckers but to farm. But as why they are here, they are trying to wipe us out. All of us. They want to join Caesar's legion, and they can only prove their worth by destroying the new Canaanites and everyone we shelter. What I want to ask is that if he... Okay. So, here's the deal. I, I think we're supposed to know this. Maybe it's revealed later. But I think we're supposed to know. There was some dialogue, and we can't, because I'm using the save game, I'm using the, the latest save game where I had the furthest progress, which is a save game where I had already very much gone against Kaisar's Legion. And sided with the NCR. So it's kind of tough to go back and uh, chit-chat with Kaisar. But we know that Kaisar had, apparently, uh, one of his closest lieutenants was Joshua Graham, who had some other name when he was in Kaisar's Legion. He was one of Kaisar's greatest generals. He was, like, intellectually on a level close to that of Kaisar. And the interesting thing, of course, way back when, when we met Kaisar, is that he's... He doesn't think he's a god, but he was a student of history who recognized in uh, the model of Rome conquering the barbarian tribes and uniting the land. He thought that that approach was the one that was necessary to to rebuild civilization. And he would argue that the civilization, like the civilization that the legion would build in the short term, would be would be disgusting and and brutal, but that in the fullness of time that it was a stage that, that, that we needed to go through to get back to something like the civilization that had been destroyed by the war. And uh, Joshua Graham was with him, even though he was a Mormon and a pacifist. And, like, he recognized the... I guess we'll probably find out more about his personal motivations later, but at any rate, even though they were tight, Joshua Graham failed at the first battle of Hoover Dam. He was defeated by the NCR, and as part of his, you know... His brutal um, approach, which really was like the historical Roman approach, Kaisar had him dipped in pitch, set on fire, and thrown off a cliff. And uh, then these legends persisted that he survived, which apparently he did, although he's horribly burned. So, why did I start explaining who he was just now? I guess it's because I kind of want to know. Yeah, he thinks that the... Kaisar has been sending people here. He, he said something earlier about how it's because of him that this tribe that he's with now is considered an enemy of the Legion. And it's because of him. He believes it's because of him. If that's so, and he's putting these people in danger, and I think he's supposed to be a morally upstanding guy, why doesn't he break away from them? I guess he thinks he has more to offer them by staying here and leading them than than 
like, you know, they have more to gain from him and his knowledge than they would have to gain from being off of Kaisar's radar if he just left them. Or maybe he thinks it's too late. And now that he's associated with them, they'll be wiped out even if he leaves. At any rate, let's go back to the actual dialogue. Most don't. It's been hundreds of years since the war. They've developed their own language. Which is our language, one or two word Take differences. The dead horses. We think they were originally refugees from a place called Rez, east of the Grand Canyon. They speak a combination of Rez and the language spoken by travelers who were visiting Rez when the bombs fell. Over time, the two languages blended. Rez. I was a translator years ago, but it's hard to keep up with all of the tribal variations. Why does the, does the valley belong to the dead horses? Well, I guess it did. The valley belongs to God. Okay. No. Sorry. The dead horses live at Dead Horse Point, up the Colorado River. They came here because I asked them to. Before I returned to the fold, I visited them years earlier. I looked much different then, but I left an impression on them. I taught them how to hunt more efficiently, how to maintain their weapons war equipment when I return they showed their appreciation I would have to say you know this guy showing up with the bandages and you being able to see just enough of his face to know he's hor horribly burned underneath would make a hell of an impression especially if he was like articulate and knowledgeable it would sort of grab your attention uh, right quick and uh, all the white covering his face and it, it's weird but with the guy I'm thinking of is actually um, Kenshin Uesugi, which is probably not what they're going for. But hey, what can I say? I play way too many Kawaii games. And uh, for anyone who's interested, who doesn't watch my Kawaii series, Kenshin Uesugi is a historical figure. It's not me being an anime nerd. It's me being a history nerd, okay? Totally different thing. Although, as a figure from Japanese history, yes, he has been represented in various retarded well, sometimes often super awesome and cool, and sometimes completely ridiculous uh, ways through in anime. Oh, I haven't seen any sorrows in the valley. Oh, you haven't looked hard enough. There's plenty of sorrow here in the valley. You can get totally depressed. The sorrows have many skilled hunters among them, but no warriors. They have not had to deal with war or raiders for decades. You might want to train them up. Even though they can hunt a full-grown yaogwai, they don't know how to deal with the white legs. That's why we're here. Are the new Can Knights really a tribe? We wear more clothing than them and understand more about technology. But we're still a tribe. A linked family of families. Instructed Bogart, by God to reproduce. Phoenix, new Vegas. They're just places. Metal and stone. New Canaan dies. But the tribe lives on. When the walls come tumbling down. When you lose everything you have. You always have family. And your family... <laughs> Always has tribe. The family will come together at Sumashlam. Let's talk about something else. Of course. Do I need to trade? Can I ask you some personal questions? Okay, maybe this is where I'm supposed to find out all that stuff. Right now, I'd like you to focus on helping Daniel. Maybe there will be time later. Okay, so we're probably... You know, all that stuff I told you about how he was the guy who uh, was coded in pitch and burned and thrown. You might have figured that out for yourself if you were paying attention to Kaisar's speech many, many, many videos ago. But yeah, actually, we're probably not supposed to know that, so... Oops. That's something needs repairs. Let me have a look. My tribe may take too much pride in its mechanical talents, but in truth, we are intrigued by the workings of a fine firearm. So... Ooh, that would be kind of pricey. And uh, I don't know what kind of ammo it, m it uses, which means I don't know whether or not I use it. 2,000 caps to increase this. Damn, these are expensive to repair. This is the problem. I'm using a gun that I got from the DLC. Which means probably uh, paying somebody else to repair it is the only way I can get it repaired. That being said, this thing, he's repairing it all the way to 100. Which means, yeah, his, it's right there on screen. His repair skill is 100. 
So in Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas, uh, for you to repair something, regardless of how high your repair skill is, your repair skill dictates how high up you can repair it, but you need um, the same piece of equipment. If I had two Sorrows outfits, I could repair them together and, and use parts from one to get a better Sorrows outfit. But uh, any character that you pay money to fix, uh, presumably they provide the parts. And the more expensive an item is, the more caps it costs you to repair it. But, damn, I, he, he has a repair skill of 100, which means if you have the caps, he can repair anything, like here, three caps, and it doesn't appear to make any difference, but I, it must be at 99.7 or something. But, yeah, the, he has a 100 repair skill, which means he can take any piece of equipment, and if you have the caps... He can make them, like, maximum. But it's only... No, it's not only the weapons. So my armor must be in perfect condition. Otherwise, he would be offering to repair it. Huh. We do. Though the White Legs destroyed New Canaan, they didn't destroy all of our supply caches. Because we're that freaking awesome. All forms awesome. of currency are recognized here. Caps, NCR dollars... Even Legion coin. Take a look. It's in a book. Reading Rainbow. What am I wearing? Uh. Yeah, my stuff's in perfect condition because I haven't actually been, haven't actually uh, taken any hits since I got here. So that would be why. Um. Interesting. So we can buy ammo for these 45s. I wonder if you're able to buy it in the outside world once you get there. Damage second 99. Damage. See, this is interesting. Damage 32. Well, it's not in very good condition. That's probably why. Um... We need to think carefully. You and I, General Viewer, I certainly wouldn't do this without you. We need to think pretty carefully about what we're going to want to spend money on before we leave. Because another little thing, I don't consider it cheating, uh, but one little fact about this DLC that I became aware of before getting started is that you, um, you can come back, but all the named NPCs will be gone. So I don't. I think we can come back and wander around and explore and go to different places, but I don't think we'll be able to to use uh, Joshua here as a shop, which means I don't know if we are going to be able to. Like, if I really want to have a super awesome 45 pistol and submachine gun, looks like I need to actually stock up on this stuff, especially these. Um, I might want to just buy them now. They're not that expensive. Uh, HP slide increases condition. Silencer. Reduces spread. Increases ammo capacity. I don't know what the plus P means. That's a lot of caps. That's not really that many caps. Four t I got 18,000 caps. <sighs> Anything I can sell them? I didn't really bring... Oh, you know what? I bought all these eyeglasses and stuff. This fungus is among us. Uh, sell him some whiskey. Sell him some turbo. Yeah, pretty much don't do drugs, so... 
Sierra Madre Martini is got to be alcoholic, right? Party time mentats. He's not really giving me... You know what? He's actually giving me a horrible deal for this. They got a value of... He's offering 17. They got a value of like 80. You know what? Let's... Let's talk to him about that stuff later. God be with you too, Joshua Graham. Let's uh, let's take a look at our uh, our whoppets. We have the um, wrong window open. We've got 17. Yeah, we don't have enough ammo for this stuff to be using it anyway. I don't I don't remember now if this um, if this uh, ammo is readily available outside of uh, the DLC. Welcome back. So I could go back to my plan of just buying that stuff. And then the uh, pistol's in great shape. The submachine gun less so. Does he sell the submachine gun? Yeah, but they're kind of pricey. And he said that the white horses, it's their, their custom weapon. So you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking uh, if we buy just these, I can mod my stuff up. Because those mods may or may not be something I would have found for free uh, later on. All things in moderation. Who? Yeah, I may or may not have been able to find those mods for free, but um, we will get 45 auto submachine guns as we kill those dudes. And matter of fact, we probably left some behind because I wasn't fully looting some of the enemies that we were uh, wandering by uh, for fear of getting overburdened with stuff we couldn't carry back with us. Um, but certainly we can, uh, as we kill white legs, which it seems like will be a, a regular part of the plot here. Um, auto jack swim pack, the tour hide, dog hide belt, recycling, recycling. But yeah, as we uh, as we fight those guys, we'll probably get our hands on more. Uh, yeah, let's not steal from this guy. He, uh, he might not care for that. But yeah, it seems like we'll be able to get more of the weapons and maybe uh, repair them up to high condition uh, without spending the caps. I've got quite a few caps. I could afford to be a little bit looser with them than I have been, but the reason I have a lot of caps is because I've been a bit of a, a spendthrift. So, you know, there's a logic in that. At any rate, we now have our new quests. Uh, we've got a couple of locations that uh, Joshua wants us to visit. Zion Fishing Lodge. Well, the closest is the Crash Scout Bus, which is not too far away from the old Rockville Bridge. So what do you say next time, folks? We uh, fast travel to that bridge and um, head on foot to that scout, uh, Crash Scout Bus, which I think we may... Did we even pass that and not realize it was important enough to get close enough and trigger it? Don't quite recall, but... Um, we will definitely be visiting there in the next video. I'm the Mysterious JG. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. And I hope you'll join me next time as I <laughs> occasionally have asides about religion without the intent of upsetting anyone. And, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's it's going to be an interesting DLC. I, I, I kind of appreciate the fact that um, it's set in a futuristic world where pretty much the religions we know of are mostly forgotten. But not completely. We've run across a few characters who still remember the old religions. And um, it's kind of interesting. I mean, the Fallout games... Um, I can see how somebody who takes religion very seriously could potentially find something to be offended with. But I think they're fairly thoughtful about it. And, you know, what would happen if uh, there's a nuclear war and a lot of our culture got wiped out and there were sort of fragments? And I don't know. 
and I, I'm under the impression that just Joshua is going to be presented as a pretty sympathetic character. Um, and as we advance, we will find out information about him in the rate that we're supposed to, as opposed to me spoiling it because I couldn't remember whether or not it had already been revealed. But yeah, what have I really told you? That legend that we heard about with the, the legate who was covered with pitch and burned at Caesar's order... And the guy with a heavily bandaged face who says, Caesar keeps sending assassins to kill him. Yeah, they're the same guy. And we'll go out and try to do some stuff to curry his favor next time. Bye-bye for now, folks.